We continue on page 166. We left off last week in Les Machshavot Fisa Bachklal, which is in the original text, about two, four, six, about nine lines from the bottom. We're holding the Gamma Tachtainim. So we need not to repeat, as we always mention time and again, uh, instead of taking the time to um, fill in what we learned in the last class, or generally the topic that we're discussing at this time, it's preferable that we spend all the time in moving along. And what about the information of the previous class, namely for the newcomers, and even those who participated? You know, there's the uh, the the uh, entry into the present class. Sometimes you need to pick up a little bit on the information of the past. So perhaps we will, but very briefly, because as we always mention, it's a click away. You can see it in the previous uh, previous. Um, class which is uh, up on this website wherever you're watching it it's, it's, there is a preference um, uh, to especially for the newcomers they want to fill in of the previous classes to go to the original website which is Tanya Online one word TanyaOnline.com there you have uh, easy access to all the previous classes starting from last week's class two weeks ago and this entire segment which we began a few months ago it's already been months uh, a very unique segment indeed. We did explain just by the terminology of the name or just by the, the wording over here of the, uh, the, of, the, um, of the study, of the name of this segment that we are learning, Shar Yichud, the gateway into oneness and faith. You're entering into a gateway as we try to do this, uh, say this briefly to encapsulate really the energy of Shaykh Bimuna, you're entering into a gateway of oneness, you'll never come out the same. Guaranteed. Study this thoroughly, in depth. And in depth means meaning not to we're not talking about something just to um like the Iyun Rav with great depth, but just to understand Dovor Dibur Al Ifnov step by step throughout these ten or twelve chapters, which is Shaykh Bimuna. It's a different Achtus Hashem, it's a different Shema Yisrael Hashem Alikeinu Hashem Echod. Inevitably different type of faith. Um, we spoke about this in the past, again, just by the name, which al Rebbe gives a segment, and um, the advantage is that uh, you can, it comes up with a separate scroll bar, with, uh, the, the text come up, comes up in a separate scroll bar, so it's simply easy to follow the class, and in this case, easy to figure out what we're learning, what the al Rebbe is talking about in this very chapter, chapter Zayin, which becomes a very central chapter in this whole Shariah of Emuna based, obviously, on the information of the first five chapters. If our six chapters, Hay is unique on its own, as we explained then, even though an important part of Hay, which is definitely a connecting point between the message, begins uh, Dalid, and then Tavav, and Zayin bringing it home so um, articulately. And the al Rebbe takes this energy of this, Hash, the, uh, this Hashem Elikim, it takes this energy which, again, so comes, so, comes through so clearly in Zayin, bringing home this message of Vov, follow up of Dalit, again with the information of Hey, And he elaborates on this, and, he's, and, and th- this is the simple reason. You can see it's a very long chapter, because once he brought it home, he clarifies, al Rebbe clarifies certain ideas, which, um, which at this juncture, al Rebbe feels it's so easy to clarify. So you can, again, you can see it in the previous classes. Uh, on this very chapter, Zayin, we had quite a few, as you can note. They're all up there on the left side. Uh, you can open them up, and as uh, as you open it up, they all come up in the same fashion. Um, and in, in, in order to understand where the Alter is going with today's class, but one of the things the Alter Rebbe clarified is that uh, famous argument, which among daily Israel, for that matter, great among y- y- Yidin, um, uh, which is, is Tzimtzum Kipshuti, or Tzimtzum is not Kipshuti. So, very brief, there was naturally the Tzimtzum, based on this, which is uh, written clearly, and al Rebbe brings it so clearly, in the Nukuditeta, from the Yitzhak Chaim, that there is, there was a, there was a devoid, an area that was devoid, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, was Mitzamtzum, and contracted his Eire, Abilti Balvul, the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he contracted in order to create Eilamis, not only in this world, but all the Eilamis Supreme Eilamis, Superior Eilamis, all the way to Atzilus, which is also called an Eilam. And even higher than that, because any distinction, any definition can never be in, stand in the face of infinity. We spoke about this so many times. In the face of infinity, and nothing, not only of finitude, but anything of distinction. Uh, we even spoke about Midas Datzilus, measurement. Midas is just a can't. Not only doesn't exist in the spirit of infinity, it can, by definition. 
So Kodesh Baruch Hu's mitzam to this area of building Bagvul al Atzad. He created this hollow, this this uh, hollow, so to say. Hollow was like a, an empty space, and with there, there was the light which trickled in from beyond the hollow, from the Ein Sof, and a very uh, narrow kav v'chut. There has to be some light because there has to be some energy to create the world. Worlds just doesn't don't don't come in a vacuum. And there, the need of the energy which created the world, which cre- can, creates rather all the um, the the levels which is beyond even Elamis, and then ultimately Atzilus and Bri Atzir Asiya, till this very world is created. The Siya Gashmis comes to that Kav V'chut as it's known, a trickle of light comes from the Ein Sof. So they're needed naturally. So again, the, the and, and, and and that's the only way Elamis could have ever come into being. Understandably so. So the question was: so there was a symptom. Everybody agrees there was a symptom. Understandably, there was the symptom of the Ein Sof because if the Ein Sof is present, nothing could be. Present together with the Ein Sof. So if you see, we see an Elam Hazar Gashmi, and then there's the Elam Asel Yainim, even the Gan Eden. Gan Eden, Nisham is Yeshvim, Nani Miziv Ashkino. It can't be that this is, could, this can never coexist with the true infinity of HaKadosh Baruch. So there was the Tzimtzum. The question was, there's those who said, the Tzimtzum is Kipshutei. There's those who daily used to say, the Tzimtzum is Kipshutei. And they, they, the reason we spoke about this last week, they couldn't fathom. They could not. They could never believe that there could be a mitzvah that not only Hashem knows everything and is in control of everything. Understandably so. No one ever negated that. Certainly can't be a god will be Israel to negate that. Understandably so. Every yid believes in that because Rabbah is completely in control. But to say this is Hakadosh Baruch Hu, that's a far cry. If this is the same Hakadosh Baruch Hu. The way he is pre symptom and post symptom, no. They said that was too much, so symptom was kipshute and so on. And here the Altarebbe negates it in a number of ways. Again, you can see this of last week in last week's class as we began the text, Vihini Mikan. And so, the, in which the Altarebbe negates this in, in a number of ways. And Altarebbe speaks about the Vigambe Tachtainim. And, um, you know, to add a few, a few words over here, I just. Go, it's just literally a click away. Just open the previous class, and if you want to see towards the end, even though it's one pretty much one complete message, um, and um, the the uh, but you can follow the text and you know just try to put the uh, the the, uh, the the class corresponding give or take where the text would be, which you could imagine. You probably um, a few minutes here, a few minutes there, before or after, and follow along to get into this very to pick up the message of this very last few lines, which the al uh we concluded last week, Les Machshavet Fisa Bach Klal. And the Gamet Tachtayim, so we're going to continue. We're going to continue. Really, it's if we say it's easy, and you know, I'd be the first one who would be interested in taking some time and building this up over here, but it's really easy, and it's just fair that we utilize this time that we have today in order to go on, to move, to move forward. The Gamet Tachtayim. Altarebbe says, even mitachtenim afagavdim amamalal kolam, and even in this inferior dynamic, even the Kodesh Baruch Hu fills the world. Eini kinishmas, which that would apparently say that there is a tfisa. You can't say that you know one of the messages of Altarebbe was saying that there is no difference before the Kodesh Baruch Hu created the world. Atot shleini bred matam shleini. It doesn't bring it in last week's in last week's uh, the, the wording in last week's class, but it's the same idea. Then maminim bnei maminim, because Baruch Hu Yidei Kol Ha'itzurim, base is all predicated on that Rambam knowing himself. That's the way he knows everything, because there's nothing else out of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. As he says, he brings this Zayar, this Rai Mehemne. That less man to nothing can shul say nothing goes out of Hakadosh Baruch Hu's domain. In Malak Kolal, in Hey Mikashem Miyachad Zina Lezina, one type to another, one kind to another. That the above, the below. There's nothing, only. There's no closeness in the four elements, only when the Kodesh Baruch was there, in other words, which as the Rebbe is saying, the as he explains over here, that nothing could ever grasp a Kodesh Baruch Hu. The Ebeshter is hidden of all hidden, in other words, even the area which is, the, by definition, hidden, which these are, Eilamis, Al means steaming, even from there he's hidden, there's nothing could ever grasp a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And again, de- demonstrating the transcendence of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And the idea that don't try to identify Kodesh Baruch Hu the way we work, that we are, the way we are impacted, the way we work, and look, we mentioned anybody who is involved in anything, it's always impactful. You could build 50 buildings, the 51st will make an impact in you, maybe less than the first, the second, the third, 
Um, but nonetheless, everything a person does and everything a person invests because there's always the connection and there's always the impact of this outside of you towards you and therefore by the Kodesh Baruch Hu, this whole idea doesn't work there's nothing outside of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And again, this past and the previous class as well, we spoke about this with Al-Tarebbe brings and again, this becomes the foundation or a big part of the foundation of the Al-Tarebbe is pointing out that Simtum is not Kipshutei based on this Ramam. There's nothing out of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And therefore, nothing could ever grasp HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And again, if you could just look into the last class, what were the al Rebbe was coming with with those words, the less machshav atfisa bach kloch klal in this context. The al Rebbe continues, even metachten, even the memale kolal, even the Kodesh Baruch Hu is memale, he fills in all the worlds. And apparently, if he fills the worlds, apparently there's a certain impact because he is identifying with him, with is Bechlal, and even this inferior world, the fact that he fills the world, and we do understand, he does, because you see such multiplicity and 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 um, and, and so many different dynamics within Elam Hazah itself, and how much more so the Elam Hazah, and in there's so many infinite levels, it says, of infinite Elam and so many infinite levels of of, of, of levels within Ganeid in itself. In other words, there's this multiplicity at every single level, so in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, this didn't just come by chance, randomly. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is memalelein, he's creating everything. And even in this world, we can see there's billions and multiple billions of billions of different uh, uh, um, uh, t- types and kinds of creations in every one of the four levels, Deim and Tzamei Chaim and Daber. The inanimate, the, the uh, inanimate, the tzemeach, in other words, within the botanical world, and then the chai, the animal world, and the medaber. So many different, and they say in shav, and in parts of fein shav, and their images are not the same, their, their ideas are not the same, their knowledge is not the same, but this multiplicity is something which is part of Elam Hazah. It just didn't come randomly. Every one of these archetype you know, creations, it's a Kodesh Baruch Hu's investment, and then all the details which follow, this each one is, details also didn't come just about, just like that. Everything is a Kodesh Baruch Hu's decision to make it exactly like that. So apparently he's involved, in Malik Kalam, and you're going to say that there's no difference. Kedem Shnever Ayelam, Achash Shnever Ayelam, Kodesh Baruch Hu is the same before he created the world, after he created the world, pre symptom post symptom how could you say that? If he's Memalalain, it seems like he's actively Memalalain. If you're Memalalain, if you're involved, it makes an impact on you. What are you going to say? That you decided that orange is going to look like an orange and the apple is going to look like an apple. And it had to be so. Now they came randomly. Every fruit has its dis- this distinct um, image, color, um, taste. The whole makeup of every fruit is designed by the Creator. And every single part of this world designed by a creator. So he was memalulain, and that's, that's, that's doing a lot of stuff. So one would suggest that there is inevitably somewhat impacted by this which he is creating. He is memale. <clears throat> Makes sense. Yeah, he's in control 100%, but to say, the pre symptom post symptom is the same. He created, he became a creator. He allowed himself to become a creator. I say allowed himself because the famous. Yeah, that is considered a Beire. Beire is a Yerida. It's a great degradation of a Kodesh Baruch Hu state. He's beyond Beire. Beire, a creator is the greatest, one of the greatest limitations you can give on a Kodesh Baruch Hu as a being. A Beire Elemis. Even Elemis Elyenim, the supreme Elemis. A Kodesh Baruch Hu is beyond that. Because him, if he way him for himself by himself, it's about infinity. Famous actually, Mekubal said he's not even limited to infinity. But in, in the presence of infinity, how could you have all this, uh, which is the pre tzimtzum state, that everything was in the infinite space of a Baruch Hu. And then post tzimtzum a Baruch Hu removed it, and then eventually is memale, is involved in creating. And such diversity, and between elements, the messages of every, I mean, you're talking about really ain't kate, it's ain't self, the Lashem Gal Tereb, there's ain't self of elements even, of worlds. In every single world, and the Abish does Mamali. Again, everything is by design. So, how could you say it's exactly the same before he created the world, after he created the world? Again, we're not talking about the control. Obviously, everybody agrees and appreciates that Kodesh Baruch Hu is in control of everything, but to say it's exactly the same thing. And if you say it's exactly the same thing, he is there exactly where he was before creation. And it was in this very spot where we're sitting. And the, the, uh, the and, and, and we say it's exactly, Hashem is here exactly the same before, before creation. 
when there's an entire infinite light filled in this space, and now you can't say it's apparently that it's the same. Yeah, he's a control of everything, but to say that Hashem's infinite presence is here in the exact same fashion, there was a world, which memalilain. And again, even from control, being in control of every detail, because it was created by design, by this creator, and to say that it's exactly before, the, before Hashem created the world, that's as well a far cry, because there the infinity of the world was present, and here it seems like it's not present, but it's present the same way as the message of the al It seems to me it's not Kipshute. The classic example, this master, this great master, when he's teaching the child, or he's teaching this newcomer to this, and these ideas of Teda, that he is Boki Bechalat Teda Kul, he knows everything of Teda. And he has to decide he's going to be the master to teach and give over these uh, the, the, uh, Teda to a, a student in a young in age, or young in stage in his knowledge of Teda. When he's teaching, it's not that he became this teacher and therefore he forgot everything and becomes the storyteller, his metaphor, or example giver, and that's all you can personify until he'll try to match up with the student and then regain his knowledge, know his knowledge is there the, throughout the entire time. It wasn't compromised at all. For that matter, when he says a story, he says a metaphor, he's right away, as he's saying the metaphor, the whole message of the metaphor is right there. And so to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and even that he, when he decided to establish this Tzimtzum, he, it's not Tzimtzum, it's not Kipshute. He's exactly here in the same fashion, the way it was before creation. Exactly the same. And that's how the continues. And contrasts this with the Memalakalam in microcosmic, or the way the Malakalam would be uh, expressed by the human being. You're involved in something. Like we said, you're involved in something that's something you're used to doing. Everything makes an impact in you. The weather makes it hot, cold, a little bang, a little interruption, or even when things go good, everything makes an impact on the human being because you're involved in something, so it makes an impact on you. You're invested in something, it makes an impact on you. But with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's not so. And that's what the Zayir was saying. Nonetheless, as al explains the message of the Zayir, It's not like the soul of man, the way it's invests, invested in his body. Not at all for that matter. Not at all for that matter. Shehi, when it comes to the soul of man, and we're not talking, by the way, the soul, the godly soul, just the nefesh, the neshama, which is mechaya the guf, the energy which gives life to the body. There's obviously the chayis klali, the fact that the person's alive, and there's the chayis prati, the energy which gives the eye to see, the, 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 which fuses together with the physical eyeball and allows the eye to see and the ear to hear, and every single limb and organ and koach and talent which exists Within the person, there is a fusion of body and soul. So this nefesh, which is mechaya, which gets involved in the body, obviously, certainly, it's impacted by the body. Nitfeses techagov, it's invested in the body. It's mispa'eles. It becomes impacted. And mispa'eles literally means it means excited, meaning to say there is the sensation of this fusion of body and soul, how the body impacts the, the, the soul as such. And it receives change. Maybe change is literally translated. In other words, everything that goes on with the body impacts the soul as well. And it becomes impacted from the changes and the different experiences with the body experiences at the time that it does experience, experience that. Vitsari, uh, when the body has pains, if, if it gives itself a bang, or whatever it is, receives a bang. You can't say, oh, that's the body. The soul is not impacted. The soul is impacted. Try to say hello to somebody, even a good friend, when they just got a knock, building their sukkah, and a little bang on their hand at that moment, try to say hello to them. A good friend, close friend, a truly close friend. You're going to wait a minute, because in the moment that they got the bang, their whole soul is involved. Involved meaning to say, it's, it was impacted by that banging. You can't say, oh, separation, body and soul, and I'm just cool and transcendent, even when my body got a little knack. 
knack would be the bang, as an example. No, the soul is impacted. And same thing when it comes to Kratos. It's cold. It's cold out there. Your soul is impacted. Or the heat of fire. It gets a burn. Everything it has is, is concentrated on that burn. Uh, even though the burn is reflected on the finger, souls don't get burned, but the finger get the the, the, the bodies of Rahman and Tzlan could feel the pain or the really heat of the fire. But the soul is invested in the body, so the soul is as well impacted. You also got to wait a little bit if somebody then Rahman and Tzlan gets a little burnt to say hello to them. That is for the reason we just mentioned, for example. When it comes to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he invests. He's certainly invests. The fact is the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything which exists within the entire universe. And what exists, we don't know. We still don't know. We just scratch the tip of the iceberg. What exists in HaKadosh Baruch Hu? And HaKadosh Baruch Hu created, everything was created by design. Everything was created in detail. And we just look around the Elam Hazar itself, this physical world. As much as we do know, we don't know much, but whatever we do know, we see the complexity of Ilam Hazah. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is there, and every single day he creates this, the weather. And right now the weather is exactly so. It's HaKadosh Baruch Hu creating. Remember, it's not just something. HaKadosh Baruch Hu just put you know, a few keyboards into this, uh, sort of notes into this keyboard and just let it play itself out. No, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, every moment of Mechadesh, B'tuvei, B'chol, Yeim, Tami, Masa, HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings life every single moment. And existence every single moment and everything is recreated. Now it's the weather like this because of Kodesh Baruch Hu right now is decided the weather is going to be like this. And right now it's supposed to, he decides to be cold or hot or rainy or snow or anything in between. Or very hot. So Kodesh Baruch Hu was involved. One would suggest he's doing it. It's not happening on its own. So one would say, yeah, if you're invo- invested in it, Okay, you're still God, you're still in control, it's not going to take you over. It won't control you, you'll be always in control because you're God and that's creation. You're a creator, that's creation, granted, but you're invested, so you're involved. And if you're involved, you're being impacted. No, Hashem is not being impacted at all. Which again justifies the Atu Kaidim Shnibraelam Atu Mishnibraelam. Hashem is the same God before He created the world and after He created the world. It seems to is not Kipshute. And in this case, He says, when it comes to Kodesh Baruch as opposed to Kodesh Baruch does not receive any changes from the changes which exist within this physical world from summer to winter from day to night like it says then the darkness does it's not cheshech mi meko David HaMelech says he says another Pasuk in the base of Kodesh Baruch darkness would shine like the day and eventually this is also one of the promises and it's metaphorical for the times of Mashiach that the darkness will shine one day like 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 like, like day the darkness will shine kayim like day but the possibility someone's going to be even we can appreciate it with a fool and say yeah I'll just uh, get Hashem's attention on something else I'll just close the lights and he'll probably want to look. Yeah, maybe if he really decides to get, you know, these gods, so he can find, you know, even today in technology, you have the uh, the night lenses, you're able to see in the dark. Because Baruch Hu probably is able to see everything in the dark, but he probably look elsewhere where it's light. And I could just um, turn his attention away because I close the lights. Even every human being understands. How foolish that statement is. It can be very dark, but this darkness, Shem is not impacted by this darkness. He created the darkness, even though darkness, a question is darkness, a creation, famous word, nothing to do with, not to get into it now at all. <clears throat> it says darkness is usually the head of light. There's no light. That is the state of darkness. Conversely, we find the Pasik. But when you're talking about Cheshach, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the one who's orchestrating this darkness. But Le'achshi Chemeko, Yitzhak Baruch Hu, there's not, there's no dark state by Yitzhak Baruch Hashem is not impacted by this darkness at all. And this is the word Memalulang, but he's not itnit feses, he's not invested in, in a way that it should impact him, like the neshama is impacted by the body. 
<coughs> and the reason the Laila Kayyem the darkness, which is additional pussy, says Kayyem the darkness would shine like the day. That means that he's not limited, and despite his investment in the darkness, does not limit it to, 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 to darkness, and that itself could be shining like the day because he's transcendent of it. Famous story of Chaniyah ben Daisi says, Misha amal l'shem and v'yadlik, yeimer l'chaymet v'yadlik. There was no oil to light. So they used vinegar. So Rechaniyah ben Daisi says, yeah, because Baruch Hu established that oil lights and vinegar doesn't light, can light vinegar. <clears throat> Try to put a wick into vinegar, it won't carry the flame. Oil does, but they didn't have enough oil. He says, Misha Amar, Hashem is not like something Hashem locked himself in, which is really the basis of all miracles. The blood in Egypt, the water in Egypt, it's not limited to water, the spider, because the Baruch Hu created the Nile. And not only created in that time of power, he continued to create the Nile. And that every moment of that day before the Makas Dam came around, and the moment before the Makas Dam came around, he's creating water with a clear design and decision that this is going to be water. But it's not limited. He's not nitfas that it ought to be so. He decided it's going to be water. Similar to the Chanina ben Daisa, which is again the premise of all miracles. He says, yeah. So HaKadosh Baruch likes or establish nature. He wants us to work with nature, not to fill our meneiras with, um, or our candelabras with vinegar. Yeah, look out for the oil. Understandably so, HaKadosh Baruch himself wants nature to, or us to work with nature to elevate nature, to refine nature, namely through our doing mitzvahs, which is a significant majority of our mitzvahs, is with the natural objects, with these four elements, Daimim, Tzvei, Chaim, and Daber. We do the mitzvahs with them, if it's the tefillin, the sifateta, the parchment of, of uh, the tefillin, being the parchment of an animal, and the ink from a tree, and so on. And we spoke about this so many times, the whole point of a mitzvahs is to elevate, sublimate, refine, Elam Haza. And then, of course, Rabbi wants to work, us to work with nature, but over the over the a long history, because Baruch himself performed many, many miracles, which is a reminder to us that I'm not nitvas, I'm not locked into this which I am myself creating, and I'm determined it should be so. But I'm not locked into it. So Misha Amar Lashem and Viyata Kemer Lechem and Viyata says the Bchanim and Daisu ever said established that oil should light, which is Hashem would establish that the vinegar should light as well. He was someone who lived that transcendent life. Touch the Shema Vaya, as we spoke many times, the level of Tzadikim Tfilo, the Meisha Isha Likim, a Tzadik is not a regular person, he's a godly person. In Meisha Rabbeinu it says, Milchetzi Lamayla Isha Likim, which explains us how could a human being be 40 days and 40 nights in the Tzadik itself, says, Lechem Leochal, he didn't eat bread and he didn't drink wine. Tzadik is a different phenomenon. It's not just somebody who has learned a lot of Tzadik, which obviously Tzadik makes a person a real. Um, Yid, if he learns Tehra Lishma, makes him close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to the Godel Hashem and Mahul he becomes a Godel, but he learns Tehra Lishma. Remember the Gemara says that even Tehra could be called Sam Chai, Sam Hamav, as Rahman al-Islam. If a person learns it, Shalei Lishma, not for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But even someone learns a lot of Tehra, it becomes elevated, becomes closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but at Tzadik, a Meishin Abedin, like it says in Zayar, there's a Meishin Abedin, a Mechol Dara, a Dara in every generation. It's not just like a person with a notch a little over than this person or that person, that girl. It's a different phenomenon. That's what a tzaddik is. He's a isha likim. He's a godly person. He lives in the area of Shemavaya, which is transcendent of the, the denominations of Zman Mokim, time, place, all the limited realities which are associated with Malchus, with it, which is Shem Elikim, a tzaddik lives beyond that. Famous question, why is it Yish Elikim, not Yish Abaya, but not to go into it. That's the level, that's the world of a tzaddik, is the world of Rabchanin and Mendeza. Not everybody can say that. But he lived in that world of a Kudj associated, aligned with the transcendency, transcendent dimension of a Kudj Baruch so he was able to perform miracles. Famous the Gemara, the Gemara was mentioned many, many miracles, Rabchanin and Mendeza. And he could say, Misha Amal Hashem and Viyadlik, Chiliyam and Lechem and so there's a person, and, and, and as opposed to a regular person, even though a person which is connected to a tzaddik and gets a bracha from a tzaddik, things change in their own life because of that blessing, because of that connection. So to the famous story of the Baal Shem Tev, that there was the only the icicles and he asked to find something to light, to ignite. And there wasn't, it was a particular important service, it was mikveh, I'm not exactly sure, I remember the details, and he said, uh, just light the icicles. And the shamish lit the icicles and they lit. Because the Kodesh Baruch Hu, yeah, created 
the whole phenomenon of nature and he wants us to conduct ourselves not based on the rules of nature and do mitzvahs with nature that he himself deci- decided to create and to establish and <clears throat> to to uh, that this should be the norm as opposed to miracle but nonetheless he himself and in, in, in much as he invested in created nature we could all, the message over here he's not nitfas he's not stuck into that rule he created the rule and therefore he's transcended by definition he's not nitfas he, therefore he's not impacted it all goes together and therefore the Bashemta would live that life <clears throat> he from for that, that reason he felt that it was important that there was light there he said, uh, just light the icicle, and it lit, and it gave off light. Which is again a thread which we can see how uh, the, the tzaddikim closer, literally, not just considered people who are learned and, you know, the Godel be Israel, which that itself, as we know some from so, you know, the, the famous Bart of Meshav, he wasn't a um, he wasn't um, a, a, a manig Yisrael, he, or for Klal Yisrael, rather for Reb Yisrael, the individual. It's a different dynamic. The Meishu Rabbeinu dynamic is a different dynamic. It's important to note because when we learn this, we realize these stories from the Tzadikim. The Gemara says, Zuta b'chu mechayimesim. The ability to be mechayimesim. Famous story with the, with the, 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 the we celebrate Kiyas Yamsuf. The Gemara says, mm, uh, the 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 tana the tana the tana he when he needed to cross the noir he said ginoi noir chaleik me mecha pinchas ben yoyer that is and it just split this is people who lived a different life just to always it's always we, we we mention it periodically people think it's 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 a terminology which is not it's not a simple terminology a tzaddik a meishe rabbeinu is a different phenomenon. A total different phenomenon, and therefore his words. It's not just an opinion. It's the Dvar Hashem, like it says, "Umila say al l'sheni." Hakadosh Baruch Hu's word is on the tongue of a tzaddik. Okay, we periodically mention it in certain junctures and in, in certain contexts of it. But this is something which, when we repeat a story of a tzaddik, B'chanina, B'chanina Mendes, or the Baal Shem Tev, all the great tzaddikim, you see over here the, the, the this idea comes to expression. This idea of Hakadosh Baruch Hu not being nitfas, he's not nitfas. He's the same Hakadosh Baruch Hu right there before he created the world, and before he created the world, before this all came about, there was nothing. There was no oil, no vinegar, no icicles, no pieces of wood. There was nothing there. It was just the infinity of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. But the tzaddik sees that infinity of Hakadosh Baruch Hu even after Hakadosh Baruch Hu created the world, because that's the emes. Tzimtzum is not kipshutei. He sees. He lives with it. Back to the message over here, and the reason because any nitfas klal teicha elam is because Baruch Hu is not nitfas; he's not invested in the world. Afagav the mamalulain, even though he is the one who fills the elamness, didn't happen just by chance. Yeah, there was the vacuum, you know, tzimtzum, and then everything just found its position. No, Hakadosh Baruch Hu is mamalulain. Every detail you see. As the Lushan in the Gemara, Shul Shul Koton Shabiyam, we quoted the Gemara the other day, even the small little water bug in the Mediterranean. It's moving from one direction to the other, or its mere being in existence is because Akash Baruch Hu created it, and not only created it in the past, but every moment it exists, the way it exists, because Akash Baruch Hu is right now creating it. And it's creating it, so it's giving it its movement from right to left, and left to right, and so on. And the, 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 uh, the leaf, famous presentation of the Baal Shem Tov is Talmidim. he said follow the leaf and they follow the leaf and they he said that told one of them to pick up the leaf is because you know, and he saw under the leaf a worm which was on its last moments and, 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 and the leaf covered it and shielded it from the scorching sun and saved its life and Baal Shem Tov said that's the reason why Akadji Baruch Hu decided right now the wind should blow on that tree and the leaf should fall off and it should twirl and roll right over that 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 worm, which which is beseeching a Kaddish Baruch Hu one way or another for its life and on its final moments because of the scorching sun, and it pleads to be able to continue living. And a Kaddish Baruch Hu over Racham Abal have decided to save that worm, and therefore everything was orchestrated, and that leaf should fall off, and it should roll till it came to that 
um, to that spot covering the worm, sparing the worm's life. As it is, the Baal Shem Tev opened up the window into Ashkocha Pratis, a divine providence. So it's not only Akush Baruch created or created a certain certain rules, like we say the keyboards, the, the keys rather on the keyboard, it could produce so many different types of music. No, everything is with precise design. And not only in the past, but every single moment, every moment Akush Baruch was creating and orchestrating, and it's the wind, it's the sun, it's every detail. So you'd say he's so involved. How could you say it's exactly the same before creation? The ways before creation was for himself by himself. The infinite presence of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. He removed that. Now he's so involved in the memalilain. Ain and it fesses b'seichai. He's memalilain, but you have this dichotomy. He's very much memalilain. Every moment, every second, every millisecond, and beyond. But nonetheless, he's not impacted because he's not in, in nitfas, meaning to say his investment is in a way that he's able to be there for himself, by himself, in the same moment, simultaneous to being him being mamalaling. Again, back to that classic example, when the teacher teaspoons the pupil that information, and again, little by little, story by story, metaphor by metaphor, he never lost his entire knowledge as the goy in Elam, a great goy in a great prodigy, a great Eloi, a great prodigy, a great someone, someone with a vast knowledge. It's been in Tatal Habdul in any other area, but we use the example in Tatal. He didn't lose it for a moment. Even as he's teaspooning the child, tells the child about a medish, it was once a story, and so on. He already, in his mind, that was my Rabbeinu, that was Hashem, that was Hashem's lo- the beloved nation. Even though this, whoever walks into the room, could, it could appear that, he, that he's saying a story and he's invested. He decided to be a teacher. It was his choice to be the teacher, to teaspoon this information little by little. And it seems like it's a whole ordeal. Perhaps for him, it's one way in, in, in another, or another ordeal, which is the talent uh, of pedagogy, of teaching and so on. Understandably so. But in the context of that he loses vast knowledge... For a moment, no, he didn't. And so too, when you're talking about Hashem, which is truly infinite, Hashem was memalulein, but not nitvas bidbay, and therefore Hashem maintains on a constant basis that pre tzimtzum uh, presence, which is again the ain't of the infinity of Akadosh Baruch Hu, ato chileni v'raylam, ato mishini v'raylam, exactly the same way prior to creation, exactly the same way, the same Hashem, even post-creation. And there the Al-Tareb is going to explain this with this the terminology, Bez Hashem will learn it next week, Habalinu Leteva, the, the idea of Seva Kalalmin, which we know these two terminologies which are brought many times in Kabbalah and Chsi, this Memale Kalalmin, Seva Kalalmin, the Al-Tareb expresses this message or explains this message of HaKadosh Baruch not the Nitfas, even Memale, with that very term Seva Kalalmin, as we will see, Bezus Hashem, this coming week. Have a wonderful night.